Hi everyone, if you're new here, my name is Michelle. If not, welcome back. Today we're talking about hair curling. This is one of the number one most asked questions I get, and it's how I achieve my signature wavy curly hair look. And I've tried to show you guys a few times before in videos where I've used tongs or straighteners, but unfortunately, some of you just can't seem to twist your hands that way or get the technique down and it's really frustrating you and it's frustrating me for you. So I have been on the hunt for ages and ages to try and find the easiest way possible to do my hairstyle for you guys. When I was in my late teens and early 20s, I actually trained as a hairdresser. So it's really, really easy for me to adapt to tools and straighteners and to just pick up anything and make my hair look good. But unfortunately, that is not the case for 95% of women. I know that even my friend Karima, who you guys have seen on my channel, she always complains about not being able to curl her hair. So I sat her down one day and was like, right, I'm going to try my best to teach you how I do it. But I think I just have hairdresser hands. It's the only way that I can describe it. I just, my hands automatically adapt to everything. So I wanted to find a tool that wasn't just easy for me to use, but that I knew would be easy for you guys to use. And I think I have found it. I think I found it. So the Vidal Sassoon Curl Secret tool came out quite a while ago, but now they've released the Vidal Sassoon Curl Secret Multi Curl. This is like a perfected version of the original. When the original came out, everyone looked at it and was like, oh my God, this is so scary, what is this? But actually, what seems to be a kind of scary looking tool that doesn't look like the straighteners or tongs that we're used to is actually an extremely innovative product that will save your life. So this version of the Curl Secret, you might have seen the other Curl Secret going around, but this version actually has interchangeable heads. So you have a 35 millimeter head, which you take off like this, and you also have the 25 millimeter head. And you can just pop that on, and the 25 millimeter head gives you a smaller curl, and the 35 millimeter one gives you a larger curl. So already in just that difference between this one and the first curl secret, you have two different types of curls that you can create. But also, the reason they call it the multi-curl, <laughs> that you can achieve so many different types of curls with it, is because it has different heat settings, different timer settings, and even different rotation settings. So you can have it curl to the right, curl to the left, or have the tool decide for you and just alternate directions as you go. When you clamp the tool together, your hair is automatically pulled into the barrel. So you don't have to do some twisty, turny yoga move to try and get your curl. I feel like that's what everyone struggles with, is when you have a straighteners or a tongs, it's like, what way do I actually go? Do I go up? Do I go down? Do I go in? Do I go out? Do I go left? Do I go right? This takes out all the pain for you. You just squeeze it together and it sucks your hair in and you let it go and your hair comes out curled. No yoga movements, no Pilates needed. I'm not going to blab on too much in this intro because I think you guys just need to see it in action to really understand how it works and how easy it is. So I'm just going to get straight into the tutorial for you guys. Let's do this. Let's figure out how to curl our hair easily. Today I washed my hair and dried it, just a normal shampoo and condition, nothing special. And when my hair was wet, I put some oil in the ends before I blow dried. The oil that I like using, I have two here that I really like. Um, I have the Redkin Diamond Oil, really nice. And I also have the Whey Hair Oil, which is really nice. I like to put these in my hair before I blow dry it, because then when I'm blow drying, my hair is just a lot softer and silkier on the ends. And you're not adding product on top of dry hair that can sometimes make it look a bit greasy. Two of the most important things when you're using the Curl Secret is that your hair is completely dry and it's also completely knot free. The barrel will not accept knotted up hair. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong with this tool. They're trying to put their hair into it and it's getting caught it's because your hair is knotted. It's not going to go smoothly into the curling barrel when it's knotted up, that's simple as that. So make sure you brush your hair completely before you do any curling. And also when you section the hair, that you brush each section before you curl it too. So I'll start off like this. I usually put my fingers on top of my ears and pull back. So you're looking to have, see that much? about that much down in the first section. So I'd say I'll end up doing about four sections altogether. So now, split my hair into two sections and just pull it to either side. Like I said, make sure there's no knots. So important, I mean, there's no 
point in even trying to curl your hair with any tool if there's knots in it, but especially with this one. So for the bottom two sections of my hair, it doesn't really matter which direction my curl goes, so I'm going to choose A for alternate directions. So each time the barrel curls my hair, it will choose right once, then left, then right, then left, and that will give me a really natural under curl here. I think it only matters what direction your hair goes in when it comes to the very top layers and the front sections. So we're gonna use alternate curling. I like to use the lowest timer setting for my hair, but Again, there's so many different uses and functions on this tool that as you play around, you'll figure out what's best for your hair anyway. It's got so many different uses and you can create so many different kinds of curls, but I just find that the lowest setting suits my hair type the best. And also for the bottom two sections, I've chosen the 25 millimeter barrel head because this creates the tighter curl. And for me, I feel like when my hair starts to drop and my curls start to fall out, it's always from this underneath section first. So now I'm taking my first section, completely not free, about an inch of hair. You don't want it too thick. If it's too thick, the barrel will not accept it. So those are probably two of the most important points that we're gonna make. If your hair is knotted and if the section is too big, your barrel will not accept it. You need a nice, small inch size section like this, completely not free, and then you're good to go. So this is the side that needs to be facing my head. I just pop this on where I want the curl to start. I don't like them to start right up at my head. I like to move maybe a third of the way down the length of the hair. Then we clamp and you wait for the beeps. So the short beeps means it's working and the quick beeps, wait for it, that means it's finished. Then you drop it out and your curl is ready. And remember by using the second setting section here and putting it down to the lowest, I've chosen how long I want the tool to be on my hair to curl it. If you feel like your hair needs more time before the quick beeps, you need more time to get that curl in, you would just move this up a couple of notches. But for me, my hair can curl with the least few beeps. If I wasn't chatting away to you guys and explaining myself as well, this would be so quick for me. It takes me a while when I'm trying to explain my way through, but I really want to make sure that I thoroughly explain myself. I know curling is such a big problem for you guys and I just, I want to solve this problem for you. I really do. If you're thinking these curls look a little bit tight right now, remember we haven't done any styling. I always brush out my curls at the end, I add some texturizing spray, so wait for that. You can see the curls are very shiny and frizz free. That's the ceramic barrel that does that. So that is the first section done. I'm going to move on to the second one and do that the exact same way. And then I'll come back to you when I'm doing my top sections a little bit differently. Okay, so we have those bottom sections done. So I was right to say four sections. I think that's the best. If you take three, you run the risk of just taking up a little bit too much hair at a time. I'm gonna clip this out of the way. Have like a little alpha. <laughs> That's cute. I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> so I'm going to slightly switch up how I've been using it. I'm taking off the 25 millimeter head. You just press the buttons and it slips out. And I'm going to put on the 35 millimeter one for the top two sections of my head. I'm going to stay at the top heat setting. I'm going to move the timer setting up a notch because when I have the bigger barrel and that creates a looser wave, I do like to leave it on just a tad longer. And then I'm going to actually use the right and left settings. So for the left side of my head, we want the curls to go in the left direction, which is L. When curling the hair on the bottom, doesn't matter how it curls. But on these top front piece sections, when you want those to really kind of flick back off the face, you need them going in the right direction. The back of the head, not so much, but these ones, yes. So for the left side of the head, we're gonna put it on L for left, and the right side, we're gonna put it on R for right. Placing the tool where we want the curl to start, I work from about one third down. Clamping down, slow beeps means it's working, it's going through the settings. Fast beeps means you need to take out your hair. So you can see the difference in this curl in comparison to the other ones. The other ones are quite more ringlety and this one has that kind of soft fall to it. So you can see just by changing the settings and the head, you get a completely different curl. Now moving on to the right side of the head, we need to change the direction of the curl to R. Apparently I say R weird because of my accent. Tell me, do I say it weird? Is it supposed to be like aw? <laughs> aw is how Australian people and English people say it. And I say R. Kiwis say R too, I think, though. What do you say? Ah, 
or R. <laughs> Oh, and also, I know I'm going to get some questions about it. If you like my makeup, I have filmed it. It is featuring all of my favorite products right now, and I made a tutorial on it. So um, it will go up probably before or after this video. Just I'll link it in the description box below if it's already up. If not, keep your eye out for it. Okay, so now we're onto the top section of the hair, and I feel like this is where people get kind of a little bit confused. One of the most important things, I think, is not to take the curl up too high on the top section. You don't want a curl that's starting kind of up from here and springing out. When you want those bombshell kind of waves, I think starting them from around, like, your eyebrow here, or your eye, that's when you get that kind of, like, sultry flick. Up too high, you kind of get springy, bouncy waves, which are gorgeous, but it just doesn't give you that kind of, like, sultry, sexy look. And for the front piece as well, that's quite important. I'm going to take down the timer setting right to the bottom because you don't want the front piece to be too springy. You want this barely curled because you just want it to kind of flick off the face. So holding it just kind of in the middle. I've got a short piece at the front anyway because it's shorter than the rest of my hair. So it'll curl differently. And then just kind of taking that twist and playing with it with your finger. See? You don't want that front piece to be springy. And then once you have kind of from here forward done, you can move your dial back up to do the curls for longer. A lot of people think their curling isn't working out simply because the hair won't sit right. And usually that's why. Don't go too springy with the front curls. They can be soft and the rest of the hair really super curled. Brushing it out and that's when you get the softness. I'm going to use some of the Whey Texturizing Spray just to really amplify those waves. So you want to get that into the root and in any areas where your hair tends to kind of get a bit flat or anything like that. At this stage, it's all about just playing with the hair and seeing where you need to zhuzh it up, where you need texture, where you need to break up some curls. Just play with it for a few minutes, run your fingers through it. You don't want to be able to count your curls. You want them all to be just effortlessly woven into each other. And then you can also just take those front pieces and spray them. Just to make sure they stay nice and flicked off the face. So that is the easiest way I have found to get these type of curls. I can get so many different types of curls out of just this one tool. It's so easy to use. That automatic curl technology that just pulls your hair in and stops you having to bend and twist and do yoga moves to get a curl is amazing. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more from me. I'm always on Instagram, by the way. If you wanna see me daily, if you wanna see this mug daily, I'm on Instagram. But that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again real soon.